Hi, welcome to Mindful Conversations. I'm Greg Dwyer. My guest today is Sherry Janga. She just wrote this book called The Shattered Oak. Now today I feel like Dr. Phil because we're talking about real serious issues in the family. Sherry, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you, Greg. It's a pleasure. And thank you for having me an opportunity to come on my show and share the story. Well, I got to ask you, the first thing that grabs my attention is you have a tree here and the title is The Shattered Oak. And I'm sure there's a story behind the story. So tell me the story. How did you come up with that title? Um, the title mostly was there was a dead tree in my backyard and it was dying with his limbs hanging and there was these vibrant trees all around this dead tree and something just spoke to me that the dead within the living that I really needed to talk about this oak tree mm -hmm. that the oak tree you know even though it's it's part of nature um, that there's so much more to a story within a tree that I want to incorporate it into her feelings. Mm -hmm. Now this is a story not about you per se, this is a story about your mom, Barbara. Yes. And the way I look at this, this is the hero's journey. This yeah. is a person who went through a lot of abuse yeah. and overcame it, and this yeah. is the story of her life and your right. life. Right. So tell us the story. Um, so my mother's story was uh, unlike most. She was neglected and abused as a child, mm -hmm. um, and really a true Cinderella. Um, n you know, no clothes, you know, got what be, had to do all the chores. So her life, she learned to adapt at a young age that all they made her do was work. She wasn't allowed to go out with friends, couldn't do anything else. So she was absolutely the true Cinderella. She had two siblings and the brother and the sister were allowed to do everything. They could go out with their friends, they could go to, you know, park, you know, plays and, mm -hmm. um, but they never allowed my mom to do anything. So she could never understand why she was like the unwanted one in the family, but she just adapted because that's all she knew how to do was adapt. And um, she would just always have to help her father do all the chores around the house. Mm -hmm. So then carried on, you know, she finally, um, things happened. Her father died when she was 13 years old and they had to go move in with her uncle. And um, the uncle actually was much better than her home life because mm -hmm. he kind of took her under the wing. Um, in his home, she didn't get a bedroom. The sister and the brother and the mother got the bedroom and they left my mother in the hallway to sleep. Oh no. <laughs> so she had to stay in the hallway with just a blanket and, you know, and a pillow, but she adjusted like she always did. So once again, the unwanted one in this house. Sure. But um, the uncle um, really took notice of her and he really liked her. Mm -hmm. So he got her a job down the um, street at a pharmacy so um, she could walk down there and she worked really hard and she finally could afford her own apartment which was right above the pharmacy mm -hmm. so she felt like she was getting her life together away from her past not that you know she still talked to her siblings but you know she definitely couldn't understand why she was different compared to all of them and her mother you know definitely had a bite in her tongue and she was not a nice woman well, why do you think they chose her for the abuse, I mean, do you know or ever ask? Um, you will in the end of the story, you'll find out. And you're there's not going to tell twist. us? Okay. No, nope, there's right. a big twist okay. and my mother and her, not till she's like in her late 50s, she finally gets to put her whole life in the puzzle pieces together okay. of why this all came about. Okay. So. And this is a true story? True story. Okay. Yeah. So how did it impact you, Sherry? I mean, you know, your mom, did she sit down and tell you these stories? Oh, yeah. My mom was like the kindest, gentlest, compassionate. You know, even though she was so abused okay. between my father and her childhood, yeah. um, she honestly was just the nicest woman you would ever meet. Mm -hmm. Like, she wouldn't hurt a fly. She, doesn't, she never talked bad about anybody. Okay. She worked hard and just, you know. So how did this story, because this is generational, like I've yeah. studied systems theory, yeah. you know, this doesn't just happen in a vacuum. In other words, if there's someone in a family system that's acting out mm -hmm. or there's some problems, it seems to affect the whole system, the whole family. Mm -hmm. Virginia Satir talked a lot about that. Family systems therapy talks a lot about that. So how has this impacted you? And do you have children? So yeah, I have two beautiful children. All right. So and ha have you seen husband. this effect or impact um, I'm them? So much more positive like my life I mean thank God my life is amazing I mean I can't I'm grateful right, right. we talk about gratefulness right. you know even if you might not have everything there's sure. always something to be grateful for sure. whether it be a piece of paper that you get to write on 
um, with pen. Right. You got your Q-tips in the morning. I mean, yeah. there's so many things. You know, not everybody has everything they want. Sure. But there's always something to be grateful for. So I think because when I was young, um, like my sister had to take care of me. She became um, the war. Uh, what do you call it? She became my guardian, legal, like yes, a guardian, a yep. legal guardian. Yep, yeah, yep. sure. So we like we took care of ourselves, and I think because of that, I learned gratefulness. Because okay. with your gratefulness, you know, we had a check. My father always sent money, so we, nice. were, oh, you know, you got to be grateful for the small things that we yes, had. Yes, yes. We didn't have really heat in the house. We had to keep the heat at like fifty-five and freeze because wow. we didn't have enough money for heat. Right. Right. But I mean, I think when you go through um, life with struggles, I think really makes you a stronger person and Absolutely. gives you much more independence right and i really wouldn't change that like independence to me like having strength and mm -hmm. your struggles it, it just brings out a better person i think out of you right if you listen to people like anthony robbins tony robbins yeah and you hear his story about how he had five or six dads and how he was raised in california with poverty didn't mm -hmm. have enough food for right. thanksgiving yeah. so all of that shaped him as a person and now he will go out and he'll make a difference. And so there tends to be some kind of story narrative that whatever happened to you in childhood, right. that there's two things that can happen. One is it's a warning. In other words, it's totally. a disaster. Yeah, like yeah. it doesn't work out right. well. There's nothing good to be right. harvest from it. Right. And then there's other people that take, like Oprah. You know, yeah. you take the life of Oprah and you look at what happened to her. It wasn't a pretty story in her, her childhood, right. but she was able to turn it around. So gratitude, I teach people every day. Yeah, I love I, gratitude. I write down seven things every yeah. single day yeah. you could be homeless exactly yeah. life isn't that bad right no it's not I mean it's and you can bad. always focus on things mm -hmm. that are bad mm -hmm. uh, and you'll get it mm -hmm. uh, you can also it's like the camera we have a camera on right here mm -hmm. it's where you focus your attention mm -hmm. if you want to focus on things that are going well you'll get more of that so. and it's who you hang out with say more about that I I definitely believe like me myself because I try to stay so positive and yes. I, I really hate when I get into a negative place like you were gonna say state weren't yeah, you? yeah yeah a negative state I don't yeah. like that so yeah. for me the only way to be who I am and feel good about myself I surround myself who people who make me feel good yes um, yes. And your you know, friends, have, your family, well, yeah, your husband. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes you can't help it. You have to be around someone who might poo poo the party. But, right. um, you know, the more you stay and the more you guide yourself towards people who are wise and positive, you will become such a better person. Yeah. My mom used to say that. Yeah. She used to say, if you lie down with dogs, you're going to yep. get fleas. Right. And right. we've always heard birds of a feather flock together. It sounds yeah. so judgmental, though, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you know, you shouldn't hang around people that are destitute, but at the same time, you should be at a position where you can help them perhaps, but right. maybe you don't spend all of your time. Jim Rohn used to talk about this when he did lectures. He said, there are some people you want to spend 20 hours with, some people you want to spend 20, 20 minutes, minutes with, with. <laughs> some just two minutes, and yeah. that's it, you know, yeah. so it does impact you. Yes. So yeah. so how long has this book been out on so the market? It's this been out since February. February. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how do people get a hold of you um, if they want to talk to you about this story? What's your website? How do they do that? Um, they go on to www the shattered oak, the same name of the book. Okay. Dot com. Okay. Yep. So just the shattered oak dot com. Yep. And you have contact information in case yep, people there want is. to ask you yep. questions. And there's a couple blogs on the side talking okay. about suicide and um, some things to like enlighten yourself, you know, to think more positive about now I, I did not read the whole book but yep. I did look at the notes yep. she did try to take her yep. life right. on three occasions yeah and did you ever talk to her about that yeah so well it all kind of stem you know um, you know first she got abused by my father very violently okay. he was a very violent man he was wonderful to us children I mean we were all scared of him and afraid of him okay but he never took his anger out on his children he only took his anger out on his wife so because of this deep violence that my mother literally had to put up with almost every single night of physical abuse with punches and teeth missing, um, it took a toll on her. So then um, she finally summoned up enough courage. Um, she would write with a big pen. She would talk about you know her fears, regrets, and all these things to be her own therapist mm -hmm. at the time. And um, that helped her to finally say, I had enough of this situation. And she was lucky um, at the very, very end of their marriage, my father was seeking out other women for you know, other reasons. And um, she would tell him, you know, hey, 
you know, she understood that he was having affairs and she confronted him, but the more she confronted, the more he abused her. So the more she became silent and just kind of let it go. Um, but she, you know, back in the 70s, it was really hard to get a divorce. She had four children without a job. So, um, you know, who's going to take your case when you don't have any money? So um, she did put a divider up in her bedroom because the bedroom had two doors in it. So she put up this canvas wall. So she did get to separate him for a while um, for like the last couple months. And he did respect her wishes. He definitely would say vile things through the divider, like I'm gonna still you know, kill you and all this other stuff, but he never did. So she got to think a little bit more clearly and she was always afraid still in her bedroom, but she didn't have to sleep with him anymore. Um, so she summoned up enough courage, she got a divorce. She thought everything would be, you know, much more different after divorce. Um, she, you know, her house used to be just a house, but when her, she finally um, got divorced, she said, now it's a respectfully called a home with the mm -hmm. children and we can enjoy home. It's nice and quiet. Mm -hmm. And the children definitely were on the same page too. Like they um, respected, they were half torn in half. Like they respected their father for his guidance and his intelligence because my father's very smart um but the other half they were so happy you know after divorce because the house was quiet and and um the the, the um sorry. you're getting emotional i know i what, am what happened there what what are you thinking about that is just the story specifically what what is it that triggered no, the tears <laughs> you're so cute um just the violence the I violence <laughs> now I, I have to ask was the police ever involved so um Yes, the police did come. They did. Yeah. And they what happened come. in that kind of dissertation? What happened in that conversation? Was so, he ever arrested? No. So back in the 70s, um, there was no rights for domestic there, abuse. There wasn't? No, none. So We're going to have to talk about that. We're going to. So I, I didn't definitely know, I now, did I mean, God, now you both, you call 911, each party has to go to jail. They do? They do. So okay. do, if you don't want to, if you don't want to go to jail, you both don't make so that what, phone call. So what, what is the philosophy of two people going to jail? Both of them are guilty? Um, yeah, whoever, it doesn't matter who started the fight nowadays. If you call 911, you're both going. But doesn't that encourage it, people not to call? Uh, it, well, you, you're going to go, you're just going to both get taken care of and they're going to decide at the, you know, in, in the station who's oh. in the right, who's in oh, the wrong. I see. But you're, neither person can stay in the home. Is that in the state of Connecticut? State or of Connecticut. Unless the police officer really, like, because um, I know it's happened, I've seen it happen, that like if the mother has children, sometimes they'll let the mother stay with the children okay. and and okay. just take away the father okay. but if there's not children there they usually still will take both okay. pe both people all right in, a, in about a minute we got to take a commercial yeah, right but I want I want to talk about this when we come back from the break yeah. you know how the law has changed and how women can get help um, but obviously this still hits home to you I mean even though you wrote this book and I know you journal um, there's a lot of emotion behind this a lot of emotion well, I mean, there is, but I mean, I'm so over it. I mean, I did write the book, yes. but I honestly, my past, um, I, I, I don't hold any grudges. Right. I don't think about it on a daily basis. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously. You're thinking about it. Yeah, you're thinking right. about it now. I mean, why put yourself, why think about things when you don't need to think about things? Right, but, sure, um, sure. But, I mean, domestic violence itself, I mean, a lot of women go through, you know, a lot of hard things. And my sure. mother went through a lot but it is funny once you get divorced and my father did move on and he married somebody else and the laws were starting to change where you could never do what you could have done what he did to her but he became a different man too so is he still alive he's still alive okay. yep okay. so it's funny like it's also who you're married to sometimes you know right. um my father came from a broken past too he was poor beyond poor um they were on welfare and you know, he had broken windows in his house. He had no heat in his house. They had to get water across wow. the stream. Wow. They were on below poverty level. Okay. So for him, he had to learn everything himself too. He didn't right. get love from his, you know, family. His father was an alcoholic. Sure. His father wanted to be a preacher. But oh, really? He would, yeah, he wanted to be a preacher. That's why he named all his children um, from the Bible because wow. he was so religious. Right. And he always um, did scriptures to his children every day preach 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 but wow. he was always also drunk so he could wow. never do it in the church wow. so my father out of the whole thing I mean he 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 might have an evil side to him which he really does but he's also smart and he gave me the gift of his preaching because he didn't want us to turn out anything like he had to turn out right 
Right. right. So let's do this. Let's take a quick mm -hmm. break, Sherry. Yeah. And I want to hear more about this because you have a great story and I'm oh, sure yes, you want to get it out. So yeah. we'll be back after this break. Stay tuned. Hi, it's Greg DeWire. Welcome back to Mindful Conversations. My guest today is Sherry Jenga. We're talking about a very personal conversation. We're talking about a really serious uh, subject. I feel like Dr. Phil today. We're talking about her book, The Shattered Oak. We're talking about domestic violence. We're talking about her past. Uh, we're doing it for one reason, and that's the hope that if you're watching and you know someone that's experiencing domestic violence or you're experiencing it yourself or you need help, maybe this book could help you or maybe actually Sherry can help you because she's available. All you'd have to do is go to theshatteredoak.com and I'm sure she's available. So with all that you've been through, mm -hmm. I am thinking to myself, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Sherry, that you wrote this book and you're here on this show because you want to help other people. Absolutely. Okay. So have you ever thought about going on the speaking circuit and going around talking about this to organizations? Um, yeah, absolutely. I just got to get better at the whole speaking Well, you situation. just start. You start yeah. and do it, you know. But, um, yeah, I definitely, I mean, the more I can help, um, the more that would, I mean, that's what my mother would like. Especially yes. there's an underlying uh, mental issue that um, when you read the book, you'll see what it is. Um, if I can help with that, that's a wonderful thing. Now, she went into a mental hospital, but she was not considered schizophrenic no. or bipolar. No. A nurse found her and saw the scars and the battered hands right. and stuff and realized right. there was something else going on. What was she diagnosed as? So, um, yeah, she, in the beginning, though, I'll just back up one Please. little teeny bit. Yeah, sure. She only got in the institution because she tried suicide three times. Right. So in the state of Connecticut, once you keep trying suicide, the state, whether you have children or not, they take you. They do? They do. You and have you no can't rights. And you can't get you out? You have no rights. How no. Did, really? Nope. They signed her. They committed her. So nobody could get her out. So oh, I did keep not that know. in thought <laughs> to, you know, if she knew that, she probably maybe wouldn't have tried her third attempt. Who knows? But okay. I mean, the more you keep trying, they say you're not suitable to be here, that you need help. So right. that makes sense. Um, so that's how she ended up in the mental institution. And have, have those laws changed since I the 70s? I don't know. I, you okay. know, I haven't really kept up on it. I guess I should because I wrote the book, but okay. I only know what, what we happened. had to go through. Sure. So, and what was that like, knowing that your mom tried to take her life? Did you know that was going yeah, on? Yeah, we would come home from school. And, and what was it, medication? It would be, she tried medication twice, and then she tried, she can't swim, so she tried to drown herself. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. They, they say that men are very successful because they just do it. Then they know how to, yeah, right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Um, and the other thing that I have to warn people, and yeah. I, I have to say this, is uh, when people talk about this topic of suicide, yeah. there's a rise in suicide. Sure. Uh, when Robin Williams took Scary. his life, yeah. you know, there was a yeah. rise. So if you're thinking about doing something crazy, what's the telephone number that people can call besides 911? It's in 911? the back of my book. I okay. put all, the, so in the back of the book, there's domestic abuse, child abuse. Okay. Um, if someone is struggling and needs to reach out to somebody that's a professional. For who, suicide? Yeah, for suicide. Who can they call? 1-800-273. 8255. If you could say that directly in the camera, sure. that would be great. So it's 1 800 273 8255. Okay. And there's so many great organizations nowadays, sure. too, that sure. people should get into. There's really, I mean, if you're feeling thoughts of suicide, you should just reach out and go on the internet and find something, find some help. Right. It's not like the 70s. There's so much, there's so much knowledge out there there right and I do believe there's so many people like Robin Williams yep. which is kind of scary people don't show their emotions like you might think oh she's such a positive person or right. he's such a funny comedian and a lot of laughs a lot of people who, who are funny that's how they hide their sadness they do so yeah. you know you you know there's not always signs or symptoms of someone that's gonna commit suicide yeah, I read years ago uh, David Letterman uh, yep. 500 million dollars in the bank very yeah. wealthy yeah. very successful yep has issues with anxiety. Yeah. And I thought to myself, what do you have to be anxious I about? Know. You got all the money, you got yeah. a nice wife, a child, a nice house, career, yeah. and you're anxious. Now you never know until you're in it, someone else's shoes. And yeah. the other thing is the whole social media, fake yeah. news, uh, Facebook, people yeah. look at the feeds and they go, oh, life is well for oh, you. Yeah. Things are going great. Yeah. And then people compare themselves. Yeah. And makes then them they feel get, crappy. They make them I don't feel really want yeah, Facebook that much because I don't, it, yeah, it doesn't always bring out the best. It doesn't. Right? It doesn't. So what's your next step as far as helping people besides, I know you're doing a couple book signings coming yep, up. I know yep. my friend Nina. Podcast, yep. She's getting you on a couple shows. Yep. So, so, yep, I met this Nina yeah, Anderson. Yeah, tell her, tell us about that. Nina Anderson is a wonderful um, publisher. I met her 
by luck. Um, some would say luck. Maybe what, it was what happened? I, What's the story? How did you meet her? Um, so we, I was, on, I um, signed up for a sailboat cruise, ah. and she was the captain of my ship. Oh, nice! And me and her were chatty Cathy together, and one thing led to another, and she was saying, "Oh, I, you know, I just wrote a book about my father." Yep. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Ever since I've been a young child. Um, I knew the story needed to be into a book or mm -hmm. a movie. I mean, because it's so powerful. I haven't even touched everything that's in this book right mm -hmm. now, to be honest with you. There's mm -hmm. so much more in there. Um, but my mother's life is so like not the, the ordinary that I just definitely feel it should be a movie too, actually, one day. How could you do that? Have you talked to Nina about um, that? Or? So um, Nina, um, well, she helped me create this wonderful book. So I met her, and she's like, oh, yeah, Sherry, take your time. And when you're done with it, just email me. I own a publishing company. And so I felt right from there that, okay, it's meant for me to write this book and, and this story to be told because – if you can get through the book, the very end of the book is so positive. It has a lot of me in it and has a way to reflect on yourself. Like anybody can get something out of it. You don't have to have mental issues or suicide issues. It's a good way just to reflect on yourself. Like, mm -hmm. how do you look at yourself? Are you looking at positive? You know, so I think when you get to the end of the book, you will definitely, anybody would get something out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but Nina, yeah, she has been wonderful. And we've had this great, you know, she put everything all together. Her publishing company is SafeGoods.com. Mm -hmm. Great, it's a great, great name for your book. Yeah, she you know, actually safe, created it. Safe place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually came up with a couple titles, and she's like, Sherry, we can't come up with the title of the book until you're done writing the book. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Are you sure? I have a couple now. And she's like, Nope, not until we get to the end. That's great. So, and then she came up with the shattered oak, and I was like, Oh my gosh, because it reminds me, my mom was so shattered. Yeah. Like that word, I was like, Oh my god, that's great. And the oak is such a connection to my you know there was this vibrant oak tree in my mother's yard and it was once alive and and took as years passed it took abuse of mother nature just like my mother took abuse from my father's fist so that wow. she came connected to this old oak tree and the old oak tree became you know hit by lightning so it got detached and it was dangling and it was hanging and it was just like the feeling of my mother's insides you know detached mm -hmm. um worn up and so they were both broken from the core and dying from the inside out. So I really like to incorporate this book with an oak tree mm -hmm. because it, it's, you can relate as you read it to my mother's feelings. So this book is definitely written from the victim's perspective too, which is unusual. So it goes into all my mother's thoughts, fears, regrets, um, and emotions, which is so unique. And it's good for an audience or people reading it to understand if they had someone that committed suicide or had someone going through domestic abuse or, or they're doing it themselves or mental illness, you'll know what goes inside their mind. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people can't understand why would someone do such a thing. Well, if you read this book, you'll understand what the thoughts are going on in someone's mind. And, uh, and abuse is abuse. I mean, typically a lot of women are abused, but right. abuse can happen the other way around, any relationship can be abusive, abusive, right? right. Or toxic. To toxic. Right? And you were My mentioned parents' right. marriage was toxic. It was, you know, so you can have a family um, uh, impacting an individual, could be a male, could be a child. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just the abuser being a man. Often it is. Right, it could be a woman. It could be a woman, you know, man, you know manipulation or yeah. just mind games. But, but talk to the audience about signs of abuse, signs of uh, maybe alcoholism yeah, or emotional alcoholism. abuse. I mean, what are the signs in case somebody is sitting there watching this yeah. today? Well, stay away from an alcoholic. Stay away <laughs> from an alcoholic. I did. I chose to because my father was an alcoholic. So your husband does not drink? He does. Barely doesn't drink. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, signs uh, of any toxic relationship is jealousy. Jealousy. Possessiveness. Possessiveness. Okay. Um, angry, dismeanor. Like, I mean, if you're dating and he's getting mad and raising his voice and he yells at you unexpectedly, that's a sure sign tale to run the other way. Right. Right. You know, like my mother had signs before she got married, but she chose not to listen because she sure. was just in love with this charming, handsome man and he would never do such mean things to her once they got married. Did he change? Once he got married, or were, was he really that um, way He at the showed his temper before they got married, but she still married him. Okay. He punched her windshield. In, before? Before. Okay. And it smashed it all out. But Because oh. she was talking to another friend that was a male. Oh, so the jealousy. Jealousy. Okay, yeah. But her friend said, don't marry him, don't marry him. But she still thought he was charming and sure. wonderful. Sure. But then the div 
it's as they got married, the um, the abuse starts. Right, right. And once, you know, a person abuses, they just keep abusing because they don't feel it's wrong anymore. And then he just, you know, he had abuse of uh, childhood. So to take out his own anger, yeah, you have a bad day, he'd come home and take it out on my mother. Right, right. It's, it's like not an excuse, but that's no. what he did. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's never right to do that. Right. And whether it's physical abuse or right. whether it's emotional or a right. toxic relationship, right. sometimes you just have to cut the ties right. and be done with it right. and walk away. Have you done that with people in your life? Oh, you gosh, yeah. You got to just have the courage and be brave. And yeah, yeah. Why do you have to have the courage? What do you mean? Well, it takes a while. You might not get courage right away, right? Okay. Courage is something you work up to. Yeah, sure. But once you make that decision, right. you're done. Right. And I think that goes with anybody in any relationship. Like if you're in a domestic abuse relationship, you're not ready to leave maybe right now because you're not sure how. But it just over time and more and more things happen then you finally get the courage. And it can also be friends. It could yeah. be coworkers. It yeah. could be people that are not married to you or part of your family that are just abusive. Right. You know, why do you think a person puts up with it? Do you, do you, have you ever thought about that? Because they love the person. They love the person. They love the person. They do. They don't like what they're doing to them, but they, they always think they're going to change the next morning. I see. Right? You go to bed after. I, I, I mean, with other people who have said this too, better been abused they say you know they go to bed and they say well the next morning will be a new morning he'll be a new guy okay but it never was wow you have a beautiful smile on your face oh you're so cute no but i'm thinking to myself so why is that is it because you're very optimistic or? i don't know i think as the way i grew up okay. i mean i don't know i take everything as a challenge okay right? good, and good. i i really um i don't know i i choose to stay positive you know because there's so many negative things that can be around us at all points right. in times. I mean, right. sure, I get my own dark places myself, oh, sure, sure, you know? Sure. And when I was a teenager, I went into dark places. But, you know, you just learn how to keep your head above water. Excellent. So, so give the website again so yeah. that people can get a hold of you. Yep, sure. It's www.theshatteredoak.com. Excellent. Yeah. So, Sherry, thank you so much oh, for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank and, you. And I will say this. If, if you are feeling thoughts of suicide or you're yeah. in a, uh, an abusive relationship mm -hmm. or you just need someone to talk to, uh, watch the show again. Reach out to the telephone number. Maybe buy the book. Go to a library. Um, I'm sure you'll answer people's questions as well. And, right. And you'll support. But just remember that you're never alone. Never alone. Never alone. Sherry, thank you so you're much. So We're welcome. out of time. Yeah. We'll see you next time on Mindful Conversations.